Right, uh, good morning everyone. Okay, so uh, we will continue with our uh, lecture for today for reaction engineering. So uh, last Monday, we have done uh, tutorial chapter three. Okay, uh, there's another one more question, question number seven. So question number seven will be like a homework for you. So I left, uh, I leave two questions in tutorial chapter three. Question number four. Five, wait, question number five and question number four. Question number four and question number seven. The last question as a homework for you to try on your own to see whether to gauge your understanding of uh, chapter three. So if you are able to do chapter three by yourself, then it should mean that you are okay for uh, chapter three. Lah, okay, so today I will continue chapter four. Uh, before I forget, uh, this is already week five, right? So I plan to do the test on probably week seven. So you have another two more weeks. So I will use just our lecture time. Lah. Either I will use Monday or I will use uh, today time to do the uh, the test. Okay, so it will be on week seven. Uh, I'm not sure yet, either Monday or Wednesday, uh, either Monday or the time today during our class time, I will confirm to you by next week lah, uh, which day the test will be. So this is week five, so next week, week six. So you have another week, uh, the following week after next week will be our test uh, week for test one. Okay, so uh, we go to chapter four. So uh, probably by now you realize that the chapters are getting harder. Okay, so uh, last we have already set until chapter three and you can also see the connectivity between chapter one, uh, chapter two and chapter three. So even when you attempt the question in chapter three, you will have to use the knowledge in chapter one, the knowledge in chapter two and the as well knowledge in chapter three. So when we go to chapter four today, the same thing is happening. You have to actually use the knowledge that you have learned in chapter one, chapter two, chapter three in order for you to do chapter 4. So means kalau uh, you don't really get it chapter 1, 2, 3, that is a little, is actually very hard to do chapter 4. And it's even harder because uh, chapter 4, we need to actually derive equation. Okay, so that's the challenge dalam chapter 4 lah. Sebab we have to derive equation and uh, this equation is not really straightforward. So the understanding of the equation is really understand. But as I said, you are not required to actually memorize the equation. Okay, equation two, when I teach you to derive, you don't need to actually memorize the equation. However, understanding the derivation is also important because then you will understand how these equations are applicable to what situation. So, come can uh, every questions to other situation, uh, it has its own situation. So let's say it's this situation, uh, what formula that you need to use, so on and so forth. So if you tak faham situation tu, ataupun perbezaan the equation, uh, then it becomes a problem lah, not apply the equation. Okay, right, so I talk a lot about equation, right? So uh, what do actually you're going to do in chapter four? So what you're going to do in chapter four, we're going to now uh, design the reactor or we're talking about finding, uh, of course, color batch reactor, we're talking about finding reaction time uh, for uh, for CSTR, PFR, we will talk about finding the volume or vice versa. So maybe in the equation, katakan you're given the volume, you're asked to find, let's say, the uh, concentration or the molar flow rate, so on and so forth, depending on the question lah. But the, the equation correlates uh, reaction time, correlates the volume of the reactor. Okay, so uh, I told you uh, just now that it's actually combination of chapter uh, chapter four. It's a combination of chapter one, chapter two, chapter three. Okay, so let me explain now how does it correlate in chapter four. Okay, so first of all, uh, in chapter one, if you remember, uh, sorry, chapter two, you remember, I have already taught you to derive the equation, the design equation for the reactors. So kita ada tiga reactors kan? So we learn design equation for batch reactor, we learn design equation for PFR, we learn the design equation for CSTR. So tu dah terbagi kepada tiga. Means kalau kamu guna batch, okay, design equation batch. Kalau guna PFR, design equation PFR. Kalau guna CSTR, design equation CSTR. Okay, tu dah first. Okay, then next. In a chapter to uh, chapter one, you have learned about the rate law. Actually, uh, chapter three, chapter three, you have learned about the rate law, right? You learn the rate law, uh, either first order with respect to acre, second order with respect to acre, or it can be first order with respect to A, first order with respect to B. 
So kamu kena faham dia first ada tiga reaktor yang berlainan. Dalam tiga reaktor berlainan ni pula uh, ada R minus RA. Kamu perasan design equation tu ada minus RA kan? So minus RA ni pula terbagi juga kepada rate law yang berlainan depending on the reaction. So rate mungkin untuk reaction ni rate law dia minus RA equals to KCA. Maybe for this reaction minus RA dia KCA square. Or this reaction minus RA dia KCA CB. So kamu tengok dah terbahagi lagi. Okay then, you don't forget the three rate law that I teach you so far adalah uh, irreversible means tindak balas yang tak berbalik. Okay, so it's also possible you will have e, uh, you will have reversible reaction means kalau reversible reaction the reaction goes forward goes backward. So kalau reversible reaction, it has its own rate law yang kat belakang ni kalau kamu perasan the minus RA in bracket CA minus CB CC per KC. This is actually the rate law for reversible reaction which kamu belum belajar lagi. Reversible nanti saya akan belajar at the end of this chapter. You will learn about reversible. So kalau reversible, rate law dia pun dah berlainan. So kamu faham? Katakan you have batch right? So you have batch, you have Uh, depends on the reaction pula rate law yang mana kalau kamu ada PFR kamu kena tengok pula rate law yang mana so you imagine kalau rate law yang berlainan the equation pun dah jadi berlainan ok dah tiga reaktor dah berlainan equation setiap reaktor pula kalau rate law yang berlainan equation pun dah jadi berlainan ok so that's already make it a bit more complex so kamu kena belajar you have to learn to derive for each situation kalau batch KCA macam mana batch KCA square batch KCA CB PFR, KCA, KCA square, KCA CB, CSTR, KCA, KCA square, KCA CB. So that's already two scenario. There's already a few scenario, right? The next scenario is, kalau kamu perasan pula, uh, dalam, kalau kamu tengok, dalam design equation ada minus RA. Okay. So minus RA, kita faham ada rate law yang berlainan. Then you realize, in this rate law, kita ada CA, CB kan? Kita ada CA, CB. Okay, so sekarang kita kena, we have to think also, CACB in your uh, rate law tu can be derived differently. Remember I taught you in chapter 3, uh, the concentration of A, concentration of B of your reactant can be expressed differently because it depends on the phase. Are we talking about gas phase ke liquid phase? So kalau kamu ingat, kalau batch reactor, the concentration expressed the same, liquid atau gas, Bash reactor, sama je concentration dia kita express. However, kalau flow reactor, flow reactor, kalau liquid, okay, and gas are expressed different way. Ataupun kalau kamu ingat saya kata, express concentration untuk batch dan liquid flow adalah sama. Batch, liquid flow, the concentration are expressed the same. The only different is actually uh, flow gas. Flow gas only your concentration is expressed a different way kan saya ajar kamu yang panjang-panjang panjang equation tu that one is to address for liquid uh, flow system gas phase meaning PFR gas, CSDR gas cara cara expression dia dah jadi lain derivation dia pun dah jadi berlainan ok so apa beza dia ok kalau kamu tengok di sini you can see from this uh, from this diagram a clear mm -hmm. concept of how the concentrations are different. Okay, contohnya, kalau kamu tengok batch system, okay, so batch, regardless liquid atau gas, okay, concentration dia kita express CA sama dengan CA0 in bracket 1 minus X, CB equals to CA0 in bracket theta B minus B per AX. This one is what we learned dah sebelum ni. Okay. So kalau kamu perasan, look at flow system, flow system liquid. Flow system liquid kamu tengok sama kan kita express CA sama dengan CA0 in bracket 1 minus X. CB pun sama, sama dengan CA0 theta B minus B per AX. Okay, so maknanya kalau CA, CB liquid flow and batch, batch both phases pun kita express the same way. Right, tu sama. Okay. Yang berbeza adalah untuk case gas phase. Gas phase flow reactors or flow system of which CA sekarang sama dengan CA0 1 minus X per 1 plus epsilon X. Okay. So, 
at this stage, yang saya akan ajar sampai stage today, kita akan address only reactor which doesn't have change of temperature dengan change of pressure. Means isobaric, isothermal. Sebab tu kalau kamu tengok, dia jadi CA0 1 minus X per 1 plus epsilon X. Dia tak ada part yang P0 per P, T per T0 tu tak ada lagi. Sebab kita masih address tak ada perubahan tekanan, tak ada perubahan suhu. Okay, so anti this stage. Anti today saya akan ajar kamu tak ada, tak ada part P0 per P, T per T0. Sebab kita assume yang kita akan design waktu sekarang ni masih lagi uh, isothermal, isobaric. But later on, half, uh, probably not today punya lecture, next week punya lecture, kita akan address pula kalau ada perubahan tekanan dalam sistem kamu, dalam kamu punya reactor. Dan dalam chapter 6, kita akan address pula kalau ada perubahan suhu. Okay, so you have to really understand equation yang kalau saya ajar ni, dia akan berubah ikut certain situation. So you have to really remember, hari ni equation ni jadi macam ni. Tapi later on, bila saya ajar kamu ada perubahan tekanan, ada tambah sikit lagi part. Dan check tenang, our teacher, you tambah lagi sikit part. So, you have to really understand equation ni akan ada banyak-banyak version and you have to really understand which version applicable to what situation. Okay, so next, I will continue for CB pula. So, you tengok CB kita dah express lain because CB now become CA0 theta B minus B per AX per 1 plus epsilon x. Actually, the only difference dalam concentration dia, kalau batch dengan liquid flow, yang pembawah tu tak ada. Tetapi kalau gas, flow system, you see ada pembawah yang 1 plus epsilon x tu. Itu beza dia kalau kita ada uh, gas phase flow system. Okay, so if you forget kenapa, as I explained in chapter 3, it's purely because volume uh, kalau batch reactor, volume reactor inlet outlet tetap sama. Okay. Kalau gas flow, uh, sorry, liquid flow system, kita assume juga, bukan kita assume, technically, theoretically, volumetric flow rate untuk liquid pun tak uh, berubah. Means inlet dengan outlet volumetric flow rate for liquid flow system is the same. However, flow system gas, inlet outlet volumetric flow rate is not equal anymore. Sebab tu kita ada correlation dia. Kita ha we have an equation that correlates yang kata outlet volumetric flow rate sama dengan inlet uh, epsilon equals to epsilon naught in bracket 1 plus epsilon x okay, P naught per P, T per T naught. So again, I repeat, if you wonder kenapa P naught per P, T per T naught tu hilang sebab at this stage kita assume dulu we are talking about isothermal isobaric reactor. Nanti a bit more later in chapter 4, kita akan address pula part perubahan tekanan. Chapter 6, kita akan address part perubahan suhu as well. Okay, so now kita dah, you have learned, basically apa yang saya terang ni, you have learned in chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3. Okay, so now our, what we're going to do, we're going to combine all these three into the equation to develop the final design equation. So design equation sebelum ni hanya general. Okay, sekarang kita dah nak solve the complete design equation for us to find the either volume ke atau reaction time depending on the reactor. Okay, now, before I go more, okay, if you realize juga, okay, let me go in this, uh, kalau kamu tengok design equation ketiga-tiga reactor ni, you realize batch reactor dengan part flow reactor, PFR, you have the integral part kan, ada part pengamiran kan, so kamu tengok kita kena solve basically the integral equation. Okay, so kalau dalam mathematics, if when you take your mathematics a course, you have to learn kan nak solve integral dia. Ada juga formula or sometimes kamu kena ingat macam mana kamu nak solve pengamiran. Okay, so pengamiran tu biasanya dah ada formula. Okay, since in our reaction engineering pun, you can see that in order to solve the equation, kita kena solve part integral. The pengamiran part we have to solve. Okay, so to make it simple or to simplify it for you, dia dah ada the list of formulation dan solution dia terus. Miss, kamu dah tak payah crack your head macam mana saya nak solve pengamiran ni. Kita dah berikan dah kamu a list of the form, a list of formulation di mana pengamiran tu apakah penyelesaian dia dah diberi dalam list ini, list of integral formulation. Okay, so we will use this 
list of integral formulation. Kalau kamu boleh tengok belah kiri pengamiran kan, belah kanan tu adalah solution dia terus. Contohnya katakan you want to integrate from 0 to x, dx per 1 minus x, the very first one. You can see dia punya solution is ln 1 per 1 minus x. So itu solution kalau pengamiran dia dalam bentuk itu. Okay, so second example, let's say you see the third one. So third one, let's say you're integrating from 0 to x, dx per bracket 1 minus x square. Let's say kamu nak solve this integral equation, penyelesaian dia dah diberi. The solution is given as x per 1 minus x. So you don't have to think anymore how to solve the integral. The integral solution has been given to you. However, uh, the most important, the important part is kamu kena faham there's a lot of solution, there's a lot of integral formulation kan? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So you should be able to find out ataupun tengok solution mana memenuhi integral mana yang kamu nak solve. So kadang uh, kalau kamu tengok integral yang salah, then kamu akan solve salah lah. Okay, but for your case, not really a worry because uh, it's an open book. Uh, I will do open book. It's an online test. Meaning you can always refer to the notes. Means kamu boleh terus refer saja formula yang last kali dah terus tahu. Tetapi as I told you, it's also important to know how it is derived supaya kamu faham dan lebih senang untuk kamu tahu which equation to be used. So I will show you kit how kita derive, how we derive using this integral formulation. Okay, now. Let me start first with Bash Reactor. So you must understand in this chapter 4, we are going to derive at least 30 to 40 equation or actually even more than that. So uh, you kena faham kenapa sampai 30, 40 equation dan kenapa equation ni berbeza. The most important part is not memorizing but understanding why kita ada sampai 30 kepada 40 equation dan ken, dan macam mana nak tahu which equation is to be used. Okay, so that's what we're going to do in chapter 4. Right, so kita start first dengan bash reactor. Okay, so Miss katakan sekarang in your question or in your work or in your mini project, kamu nak design bash reactor. So you have to understand first, okay, kita nak buat sekarang bash reactor. Right, so. Why is it important kita nak design batch reactor? So as I told you in chapter 1, uh, introductory, memang dalam case uh, big scale production, we don't usually use batch reactor because we already learn eh, batch reactor ni, uh, dia ada a long batch time, dia ada, uh, the only certain amount can be processed at one time, so it's not that efficient. However, as I also told you, batch reactor is an integral part in any reaction engineering because if you have a new reactions, okay, ataupun let's say you modify some part of your reaction or sometimes maybe you add catalyst or you change catalyst, okay, kamu pun tahu kan bila kita tukar catalyst, rate law akan berubah. Rate law akan berubah, design equation pun akan berubah. So, any changes in your system or in your reaction, you have to do back all the calculation. So, when this occurs, usually kita akan start dulu dengan batch reactor. Sebab, like I told you, kalau kita tahu kita tukar raw material pun, kita tukar suhu ke, kita tukar catalyst ke, rate law dia mungkin akan berubah. Because you change something, the mechanism of the reaction may change. So, rate law berubah, design equation pun berubah. So, in order to establish this, kamu tak boleh buat kat reaktor yang besar. Kamu kena always start with a batch reactor to establish all this information. So that's why in the plan, kalau dia nak start dengan plus pilot scale, dia mesti start dengan batch reactor. Dia dah make sure semua dah optimize, semua variables dah okay, dia dah sure, baru dia akan upscale kepada flow system ataupun kita panggil continuous system. Okay. So what is important in the batch reactor, normally dia nak establish either reaction time, dia nak tahu berapa lama masa tindak balas tu. Ataupun dia nak tahu reaction rate constant, K. Kata dia pun nak tahu K juga. So there are few things that they can know by uh, by conducting the experiment in a batch reactor. So that's what we're going to do juga. Kita derive equation, kita akan guna information tu untuk mencari uh, apa dia bergantunglah kepada equation tu. Then the in the real application, this information can then be used to upscale into a continuous system or we call it a flow system lah. Means kamu nak upscale kepada PFR ke, kamu nak upscale kepada CSTR ke, nak upscale kepada catalytic reactor ke, it must first start with uh, batch reactor first. Okay, 
So this is how you derive the equation. Okay, so memang nampak macam panjang sangat. Okay, but I will explain one by one. Kenapa kita ada banyak sangat equation. Okay, now what we're going to do now is we're going to derive for first batch reactor. We're going to derive for uh, both phases, gas dengan liquid. Kan saya kata sebab untuk kes uh, batch reactor, gas dengan liquid takkan takkan uh, berbeza sebab concentration dia masih sama. Okay, so we're going to do for batch reactor first. Okay, so I'm going to explain one by one combination dia then you understand better. Okay, so since kita nak design untuk batch reactor. Okay, so we will start with the batch reactor punya design equation lah sebab kita nak design untuk batch reactor, right? So design equation for batch reactor is equal reaction time. Kalau batch reactor, reaction time. CSTR, PFR, we will talk about volume. Okay, so the batch reactor reaction time, T batch, equals to Na0, okay, integrating from 0x dx per minus RAV. Okay, so kenapa 0 to X? Sebab batch reactor, satu reactor, they will convert from zero conversion to the final conversion, your desired conversion. Then minus RA, kamu tahulah, rate of reaction kan? Rate of disappearance of A. V is the volume of the reactor which you have learned previously. Okay, then next step. Okay, now. Because, okay, when kamu tengok ada part pengamiran ni, kamu kena faham, uh, this is also important for any, uh, for other chapter as well. Dia adalah dx per minus RAV. Okay, so, disebabkan the volume of the reactor will not be affected by the rate, by the change of conversion. Kan, sebab volume reactor tak kisah pun conversion dia 20% ke, 40% ke, 100% ke, volume reactor tu masih sama. Hence, I can take out the volume from the integral part of the equation. Dia keluar. Dia keluar daripada part yang integral tu. So, sekarang dia menjadi Na0 per volume reactor. So, konsep pengamiran ni, okay, dia adalah anything yang akan berubah. Sebab dia pengamiran terhadap X. Dx tu means it will be integrated towards X. So, any variables yang takkan affected by X, ataupun takkan affected by the change of X, you can take out from the integral part. So, itu saya keluarkan V, saya keluarkan keluar daripada kurungan pengamiran. So, dia menjadi Na0 per V. Okay, dan satu lagi part pula. Tadi mathematics, so kamu akan tengok macam mana connection between mathematics and chemical engineering. So, next one pula. Sebab volume reactor, kalau batch reactor, volume reactor tak berubah. Kan? Maksudnya, uh, inlet to outlet reactor volume will not change in the reaction. The reactor tak, shrink, tak shrink, tak akan expand. So, instead of writing volume, saya tulis sebagai inlet volume reactor, V0. Okay, so kenapa saya jadikan daripada V kepada V0 is because kat atas ke ada N0. So, kalau atas ke N0, bawah ada V0, I can uh, divide it, it becomes CA0. So, sekarang kita dah jadikan sekarang dalam bentuk CA0. Okay. Integral part tu masih 0x dx per minus RA. Means kita akan evaluate minus RA terhadap x. Okay, so, that's the first part. Now, apa kita buat? Kita dah modify design equation batch reactor. So, kita bukan sebarangan modify. Kita modify the design equation for the batch reactor dengan assumption that volume reactor ni takkan berubah inlet dan outlet. So now the design equation becomes CA0 integrating 0x dx per minus RA. Done. Okay. Now next part, minus RA pula. Kalau kamu perasan, kenapa kita tak boleh tinggal sebagai minus RA sahaja? Sebab we are integrating towards x. Tapi minus RA itu tak ada x kan? Minus RA is rate of reaction. There's no There's, not, there's no X in, kan tak ada max. Dan masih lagi tak ada X dalam part pengamiran tu. Walaupun kita nak kamir terhadap X. Therefore, we express the rate law. Kita dah belajar pasal rate law kan? Kita dah belajar pasal expression of rate law. So, sekarang kita kena address pula. Minus RA ni kan, I teach you, we got minus RA equals to KCA. We got minus RA equals to KCA square. We got minus RA equals to KCA CB. As well as yang reversible, kita tak touch lagi. Kita touch yang irreversible dahulu. So, now kita kena buat untuk senario pertama, the first situation of which 
let's say your rate law minus RA tu equals to KCA ataupun we can say katakan for that reaction it is first order with respect to A. Okay, sekarang kita ganti dah. Kita tak letak minus RA, kita gantikan minus RA equals to KCA. Maknanya katakan soalan tu kata ini adalah best reactor, rate law dia is first order with respect to A. So, become minus RA equals to KCA. Okay, next. Walaupun tadi saya kata kita tak boleh kamikan terhadap minus RA sebab kita tak ada X, right? Lepas tu saya kata sekarang kita gantikan pula. Katakan rate law kita adalah minus RA equals to KCA. However, kita masih tak ada X lagi. Kan KCA tu tak ada X. Tetapi we have learned juga in chapter 3, we can express CA in the form of X sebab kita tahu kalau liquid and gas bash reactor, okay, CA sama dengan CA0 in bracket 1 minus X. This one kita dah belajar dalam chapter 3. Kita dah belajar nak express concentration CA sama dengan CA0 in bracket 1 minus X. So now you see saya dah ada X. Okay, macam mana X saya datang? X saya datang daripada CA. CA saya datang daripada mana? CA saya datang daripada minus RA. Minus RA itu datang daripada mana? Datang daripada design equation. So now you can see, saya so I will now have to combine design equation, combine dengan rate law, combine dengan CA, concentration. So how do we do this? Okay, so we start with the first rate law. Uh, kita start dengan design equation. Okay, uh, reaction time equals to T batch to reaction time of a batch reactor equals to CA0 integrating 0x dx per minus RA. That is our starting point. Then kita replace. Katakan in our question or in our reaction, it is first order with respect to A. As this example, we can replace minus RA with KCA. Sekarang dah dipilih KCA. Lepas tu, as I told you, at this integral part, at the second step, kita masih tak boleh integrate sebab kita tak ada X. You want to integrate towards X, only kamu kena ada X dalam integral tu baru kita boleh kamikan. Kamu tak boleh kamikan K, kamu tak boleh kamikan CA terhadap X. Kamu hanya boleh kamikan X terhadap X. So what happened? I replace my CA with, just now that we explained dah kan, CA sama dengan CA0 in bracket 1 minus X. So, step ketiga dia dah menjadi K, C, A, not in bracket 1 minus X. So, you see at third stage, sekarang saya baru ada X. However, at this part, dah kamu kena ingat satu lagi uh, mathematics punya rule, okay, ataupun chemical engineering is combination. As I told you juga tadi, sebarang variables that got nothing to do with X, you can take up from the integral part sebab dia hanyalah pengamiran terhadap X. Sebarang variable lain yang tak berkaitan dengan X, you can take up for the integral part sebab dia takkan dikamilkan terhadap X. Miss dalam contoh ni, I can take up K, I can take up CA0 from that integral part because they will not be integrated towards X. So the K and CA0 sekarang, saya dah bawa keluar. So kamu tengok tadi asal ada satu CA0 di luar kan, so CA0 divided dengan the K and CA0 yang saya dah bawa keluar. So become CA0 per K CA0 integrating 0 to X dx per 1 minus X. So sekarang kamu tengok variable that got nothing to do with X dah bawa keluar dalam part pengamiran tu hanya tinggal X sahaja ataupun dalam bentuk 1 minus X. Okay. So, yang part CA0 per K CA0, kamu boleh tengok I can cancel 1 CA0 at the top, 1 CA0 at the bottom. So, dah boleh cancel kan? Sebab satu atas, satu bawah, I can cancel. So, I'm left with 1 per K. So, bagian luar tu tinggal 1 per K. So, kita sekarang tinggal yang part pengamiran ni kan? Part pengamiran ni, okay. The as to you, kita dah diberi list of formulation. Tadi list yang paling panjang yang 8 formula tu, kita dah diberi uh, kita dah diberi the list. Okay. So the list says, kalau kita nak kamirkan from 0 to x, dx per 1 minus x, this part of pengamiran, solution dia ataupun penyelesaian dia adalah ln in bracket 1 per 1 minus x. Means you don't have to crack your head nak selesaikan pengamiran ni 
sebenarnya penyelesaian ni dah diberi. The, the solution is already given. If I want to integrate this, I want to integrate 1 per 1 minus x towards dx. The solution is ln 1 per 1 minus x. So solution yang ni, saya copy sahaja masuk and I combine dengan tadi 1 per k. So sekarang kita dah dapat the final equation that correlates the reaction time of a batch reactor equals to 1 per k ln in bracket 1 per 1 minus x. Maksudnya, kalau kamu nak cari reaction time, okay, nak cari reaction time dalam batch reactor kamu, kamu tahu k, kamu tahu conversion x, you can find already the reaction time. Okay. Ataupun was versa, katakan kamu dah set reaction time. Kamu dah tahu apa conversion dia, x dia, kamu nak cari k pun boleh. Ataupun katakan kamu tahu reaction time, kamu tahu k, kamu nak cari conversion pun boleh by using this equation. However, kamu kena faham equation ni kalau kamu nak guna, they have to fulfill three important parameters or three important requirement. First, dia mesti batch reactor. Second, dia mesti-mesti rate law dia minus RA equals to KCA. Kalau dia KCA square, KCA CB dah tak boleh guna equation ni. Third, okay, dalam kes ni, uh, liquid atau gas pun tak apa, sama. Okay, so requirement ketiga tu tak kisah sangat sebab liquid atau gas pun dia punya requirement, uh, inform, uh, design dia masih sama. Why? Because concentration ni kita express sama CA sama dengan CA0 in bracket 1 minus X untuk liquid atau gas. Sebab tu equation dia sama untuk liquid atau gas. Okay, so you have already derived the very first equation. Tetapi equation ni, as I told you, must fulfill three requirement. Batch reactor, rate law, mesti minus RA, KCA. And third, dia adalah liquid atau gas. Okay. Done for the very first equation. Now we go to the second equation. So kenapa sekarang second equation? Apa yang berbeza dalam second equation adalah bila kita tukar rate law. The rest are still the same. Dia masih batch reactor. Dia masih liquid atau gas. The only different is now rate law dia minus RA equals to KCA square. Okay, so tu saja perbezaan dia. Tadi minus RA sama dengan KCA. Sekarang minus RA sama dengan KCA square. So, adakah berubah tak dia punya persamaan? Okay, let us investigate. Okay, so... Kita start terus dengan uh, deriving the equation eh, sebab design equation batch masih sama. I'm designing, I'm still designing a batch. It's just that now I change the rate law. Okay, so katakan design equation dia yang tadi kita dah belajar, batch reaction time for batch equals to CA0 integrating from 0 to x dx per minus RA. Okay, so then next part. Now, kenapa dia berubah sebab Minus RA tadi was KCA. First order with respect to A. This situation now adalah bila rate law dia adalah second order with respect to A. So become KCA square. So minus RA kita replace dengan KCA square. Okay. So similar to the previous one, kalau kita nak kamerkan terhadap X, we have to introduce X into the equation. Kita tak boleh kamerkan K. Kita tak boleh kamerkan CA kuasa 2 terhadap X. Dia mesti X dikamerkan terhadap X. So, so happen kita tahu CA equals to CA0 1 minus X. This one liquid atau gas. Concentration is still the same. CA equals to CA0 in bracket 1 minus X. However, now in our equation, it's no longer CA. It's CA power of 2. So, kalau CA power of 2, if you learn mathematics, kalau belah, kan, belah kiri kuasa 2, belah kanan kesemuanya terpaksa kuasa 2 juga. Meaning, if it's CA square on my left, on my right will be CA not square, one my, in bracket, 1 minus X pun kena square. Both kena square. Kamu tak boleh just square C A0. Kamu tak boleh just square the 1 minus X. Both have to be squared. So now kamu tengok. Equation dia become K. C A0 square in bracket 1 minus X square. So dah nampak pengambilan saya. Instead of writing K C A. Dia menjadi K C A0 kuasa 2. 
in bracket 1 minus x tutup bracket also kuasa 2. Okay, now when you reach this part, okay, apa yang berlaku is again same concept. K and C A not square will not be affected by x. Maksudnya dia tak boleh, dia tak akan dikamikan terhadap x. So the K and C A not square I will take out from the integral part. Saya buat keluar daripada part integral tu sebab dia tak akan dikamikan terhadap x. So dia akan menjadi C A not per K C A not square. Pembawa tu dah bawa keluar kan? So pengatas tadi ada C A not. So C A not per K C A not square. So again saya ada satu C A not di atas. Saya ada dua C A not di bawah kan C A not square. I can only cancel one C A not at the top and one C A not at the bottom. Only one can be cancelled. So kita akan menjadi one per K C A not. Part yang luar tu dah menjadi one per K C A not because we only cancel one C A not at the top, one C A not at the bottom. Done. Okay. So part pengamiran pula. Okay. So kalau mungkin kamu belajar dalam uh, matematik, maybe you will have to buka the kurungan darab-darab baru solve. Okay. Itu kalau matematik. Tapi untuk reaction engineering ni kamu tak payah because dah diberi solution dia. For this integral from 0 to x, 1 per 1 minus x. Tutup bracket power of 2 if you want to integrate towards x. Kamu dah tak payah nak selesaikan secara complicated. The solution dah diberi. Tadi saya beli list of formulation tu kan. So saya terus ambil, saya terus catch. Dia sebenarnya untuk integral ini for this formula, the solution is x per 1 minus x. Kamu kena tengok solution ni dah berbeza kan. Tadi yang 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 sebelumnya kamu integrate towards 1 per 1 minus x. So dia jadi ln x ah ln 1 per 1 tolak x. Tetapi untuk yang part kedua ni kita integrated integrating 1 per bracket 1 minus x square. So kalau itu formula dia solution dia x per 1 minus x. So naturally apa kamu buat? Combine saja balik. So combine solution ni x per 1 minus x combine di bawah, combine saja yang tadi yang kat luar tadi yang 1 per k c a not. So now we derive the second equation. So uh, what is this second equation? This second equation is to derive reaction time for batch reactor. Okay, but the second case is for when your rate law is now second order with respect to A. You can see right, it's different right? Macam tadi saya tengok, let me show you. Tadi first order lain kan, first order Reaction time, batch reactor sama dengan 1 per K. Lon in bracket, 1 per 1 minus X. This is first order. Now, yang kita baru belajar second order, dia dah menjadi reaction time for batch reactor equals to 1 per K C A not in bracket X per 1 minus X. So, kenapa dia berubah? Sebab Red law dah berubah, derivation dah berubah, final equation pun dah berubah. Okay, so meaning, katakan dalam soalan, they ask you to find reaction time. So if you are given K, you are given C A naught, you are given X, you can find reaction time. Or let's say, dia nak kamu cari K, so dia, dia beri kamu reaction time, dia beri kamu C A naught, dia beri kamu X, you find K. Or they can also ask you to find C A naught. They beri kamu reaction time. They give you K. They give you X. They ask you to find C A naught. Or they can give you reaction time. They give you K. They give you C A naught. You have to find X. So either way, kamu tahu kan? Kalau satu equation, kan? contohnya equation ni, kamu ada four unknown kan? Reaction time, K, C A naught, X. So you can you can find either one of the unknown as, asalkan the other three unknown is given to you. So soalan exam, soalan test pun sama. Mungkin tak semestinya saya suruh kamu cari reaction time. Mungkin I give you reaction time, I give you reaction rate constant K, I give you C A not initial concentration of A, I ask you to find X, something like that. Okay, so yang penting satu equation, katakan dalam equation ada empat unknown, uh, empat unknown, Tiga harus diberi, kamu boleh cari yang keempat itu. Depending on the question, depending on the situation. Okay, so done on the second equation. Kita baru dua equation. Now, we go to the third one. So, kalau kamu perasan, 
equation dia jadi panjang-panjang panjang panjang panjang. Nanti kemudian at the very last bila kamu tengok yang PFR, equation dia panjang sangat and don't forget kamu kena ganti nilai kat dalam dia. Pengiraan dia jadi kompleks sebab dah lah equation panjang. Then kamu kena apply equation dia. So that becomes a little bit of a uh, complex problem jugalah. Okay. Now, we go to the third one for batch reactor. Okay. So, kenapa the third one? Kenapa dalam batch reactor the third one? Sebab now, kita tukar rate law lagi. So, previously was first order with respect to A, KCA. We did also KCA square, second order with respect to A. The third one, we are addressing when the rate law is minus RA equals to KCACB. Meaning, katakan if your reaction is first order with respect to A and first order with respect to B. So, now equation pun jadi berlainan. So, bayangkan, katakan dalam soalan, so far kamu dah belajar tiga, uh, dua, saya akan ajar ketiga kan. So, katakan uh, kamu tengok rate law yang salah. Katakan soalan kata rate law dia minus RA KCA square. Okay, kamu tersalah tengok, kamu pergi tengok equation yang minus RA equals to KCA. Salah lah the entire question. So, kamu kena tahu rate law yang berlainan kamu dah kena tahu equation dia dah jadi berlainan. Kamu kena betul-betul tengok equation mana fulfill what you want to find. Okay, so the last one, okay, minus RA equals to KCACB. So, katakan dalam soalan, dia kata the reaction is first order with respect to A, first order with respect to B. So, rate law dia minus RA KCACB. Okay, so now, concentration dia, kita dah kena tambah satu lagi lah kan. Sebab sebelum ni, we learn For CA sahaja because the rate law only involve CA. But now our third one involve dah CB. So kita dah kena derive juga concentration for B. So as I taught you in chapter 3, kalau B adalah reactant, this is the case when B adalah reactant, CB equals to CA0 in bracket theta B minus B per AX. Okay, theta B kamu dah pernah belajar kan? B per A pun kamu dah pernah belajar kan? Dia adalah the ratio of stoichiometric coefficient. Okay, now. For this part, there is something that is uh, exception ataupun special rule applied in this equation. What do I mean by that? Okay, kalau kamu tengok original equation untuk CB, dia adalah sama dengan CA0 theta B minus B per A. X. B per A itu kan adalah ratio of stoichiometric coefficient. Okay. Normally B per A ni tak semestinya satu kan? Tak semestinya satu sebab ia bergantung kepada tindak balas. Serta tindak balas katakan satu A bertindak balas dengan dua B. Hence the B per A becomes two. Ataupun let's say two A reacting with one B. So the B per A become one over two right? Okay. So it not necessary one. However, because in this equation, kita nak guna integral, kita nak guna integral formula. Okay, so integral formula ni kan, as I told you, dia dah beri solution dia. Okay, disebabkan limitation formula ini, again, because of the limitation of this integral formulation, B per A dalam, uh, so B per A dalam equation tu uh, uh, harus menjadi satu. Because if it's not one, kita dah tak boleh guna penyelesaian integral ini. Sebab tu, apabila B per A itu jadi satu, hence CB sekarang jadi equals to CA0 in bracket theta B minus X. Kita dah assume B per A itu adalah satu. Baru kita boleh guna integral formula yang kita dah ada. But don't worry, katakan dalam soalan test atau exam pun, saya dah make sure yang B per A itu adalah satu. Supaya kamu tak kamu dah tak confuse kenapa kenapa sebenarnya bukan bukan satu tapi dalam formulation tu kena jadikan satu. So I will make sure B per A dalam soalan ke dalam test dalam exam B per A tu dah satu supaya kamu dah tak confuse kamu terus tahu yang memang CB tu sama dengan CA0 in bracket theta B minus X sebab B per A tu adalah satu. Hi, what I told you, do remember, the limitation is just because of the integral. Kalau kita nak guna equation ni, B per A tu terpaksa menjadi satu, baru kita boleh guna. Kalau tak, we have to solve other way which is more complex. So, that's the limitation of the equation. Okay, so done. Right, so then next, 
we do back the same thing. Kita combine design equation. We combine rate law. We combine concentration. But now it become a bit complex. Sebab dia dah ada CA, dia ada CB. Okay. So you see the last one. Okay. So integrating reaction time for batch reactor equals to CA0. Integrating from 0 to X. DX per by right minus RA kan. But the minus RA now is KCACB. So, kamu tengok equation kita dah berubah sebab tadi minus RA KCA. Second case, KCA square. Third case, KCACB. So, similarly again like previous one. I cannot integrate K. Uh, I, not, I cannot integrate KCACB towards X because there are no X. So, I will replace CA with CA0 in bracket 1 minus X. So, my CA now become CA0 in bracket 1 minus X. Similarly, my CB is now, I convert it into CA0 in bracket theta B minus X. So, sama. CA saya convert, CB pun saya convert dalam bentuk CA0 in bracket 1 minus X. Another one CA0 in bracket theta B minus X. So, same concept. K and C A not square. Kamu jangan lupa part bawah tu ada dua C A not right? Because one comes from C A, another one comes from C uh, C B. So the K C A not square, I take out from the integral part again because they got no, no got nothing to do with the X. Ataupun dia takkan dikamilkan terhadap X. So it become yang kat luar tadi ada C A not. So C A not divide by K C A not square. So, part luar tu dah bawa keluar jadi CA0 per K CA0 square. In, dan part integral become integrating from 0 to X DX per 1 minus X bracket and other bracket theta B minus X. Okay, so maybe in kalau when you solve this in mathematics, you have to open the bracket. Kamu kena solve pengamiran kuadratik. Ataupun kamu mungkin terfikir tapi doktor tita B pun tak ada kaitan dengan X kan. Kenapa kita tak bawa keluar? Sebab kita dah ada special formula untuk address pengamiran ni. Means if kamu dah ada pengamiran 0 to X, DX per 1 minus X bracket, tita B minus X bracket. Untuk formula ini dah ada penyelesaian dia. Sebab tu saya tak bawa keluar tita B ataupun saya tak darab, saya tak buka kurungan. Sebab dah ada penyelesaian dia. So the solution for this integral, the solution is given as 1 per tita B minus 1 ln in bracket tita B minus X per tita B in bracket 1 minus X. So kamu tengok for this integral, Solution ni dah diberi. So, saya just copy sahaja solution ini. Don't forget, saya kena combine dengan part tadi yang CA0 per K CA0 square tu saya combinekan. Then, sebab CA0 tu saya boleh cancel. I have one CA0 at the top. I have two CA0 at the bottom. I can cancel only one. So, that's why it jadi one per K CA0. Then, saya combine dengan solution integral tu dalam equation. So, now... Kalau katakan your case reaction dia minus RA equals to KCACB, the reaction time is now given as follows in the yellow box. Mini, kalau kamu nak cari reaction time, kamu tahu K, kamu tahu C, A0, kamu tahu theta B, kamu tahu X, kamu boleh cari reaction time. Or vice versa, maknanya sekarang dalam equation ni jadi more complex kan sebab kita kena ada berapa unknown. Uh, reaction time, K, C, A0, theta B, X means lima unknown ni, I, I can ask you any of the unknown dengan syarat lagi empat unknown tu saya beri kamu. Contohnya katakan saya suruh kamu cari X. Means kamu kena, saya akan beri information, reaction time, K, C, A0, Tita B. Kamu ada empat information ni, kamu disuruh cari X ataupun vice versa. So, Tita B ni kamu tahu kan, kamu dah belajar kan, Tita B adalah apa? Uh, ratio of initial amount of B over A kan, kamu dah tahu. Kamu pun dah pernah tahu macam nak kira Tita B. So done. So kamu can, you can see equation become more complex sebab rate law dia pun dah jadi more complex. Okay. So you have learned three equation for batch reactor. So batch reactor uh, reactor yang paling kurang equation adalah actually batch reactor. Okay. Batch reactor yang paling kurang equation. Yang complex adalah sebenarnya untuk the continuous reactor means uh, CSDR dengan PFR. Okay. So 
Don't forget, okay, tapi saya rasa benda ni mungkin kamu tak ada masalah sangat adalah kamu kena for your part as an open book test, you don't really have to worry about the derivation honestly sebab you can terus refer untuk final equation. However, kamu kena tengok kamu kena faham kenapa equation tu berbeza dan bila kita guna equation yang mana. So for best reactor, not so bad because you only have three equation, three rate law, three equation. Ah, uh, Kamu tak payah takut pasal the phase, liquid atau gas pun kita masih guna yang sama. So that's not really a problem but it becomes a problem yang kita buat untuk PFR. Okay, so now let us try one question first untuk Bash reactor. So let's say kita tengok kita buat soalan yang senang dulu. Okay. It says given a liquid phase reaction takes place in a bash reactor. So you take note. Okay kamu dah kena faham bila sampai chapter 4 information pasal reactor tu penting. Ketika dikata bash. Kamu salah baca kamu pergi tengok equation PFR. Salah dah. Kamu tengok equation CSTR. Salah dah. Means at the very first stage kamu dah salah the entire question. If you look at the different if you look at the wrong reactor, one. Second, dia kata, reaction is first order with respect to A, first order with respect to B. So, dapat information ni, kamu dah kena tahu rate law dia apa. So, the rate law is minus RA equals to KCA CB. So, why KCA CB? Sebab dia first order with respect to A, first order with respect to B. So, done. Kamu dah tahu dah. So, kamu dah check. Kamu tengok dalam notes. Okay, first dia bash reactor. Kedua, rate law dia KCACB. Ketiga, dia dalam liquid phase. Okay, kamu dah tahu dah tiga information ni. Kamu tengok equation mana yang memenuhi ketiga-tiga syarat ini. Okay, dan Next, dia beri kamu information nak solve equation dia lah. Okay, so kamu dah tahu at this stage, dia mesti sebenarnya uh, rate law, uh, design equation yang paling last yang kita belajar tadi, yang KCACB tu. Okay, next dia kata, 60% inlet reactant B balance adalah A. So what is this sentence? Dia beri kita mole percent or we can uh, use this to find the mole fraction. However, 60 mole percent ni adalah mole fraction B. So Y B not 0.6, hence Y A not mestilah 0.4. 60% B, 40% A. So Y B not 0.6, Y A not 0.4. Normally kalau kamu diberi initial amount ni, mole fraction ke, mole percent ke, concentration ke, molar flow rate ke, ataupun uh, number of moles ke, asalkan dia adalah initial amount, kamu tahu ni mesti nak cari theta B. So kamu tahu dia bagi initial fraction ni, kita akan guna untuk cari theta B. Okay, right, done. They give us reaction rate constant 0.1. Dia beri kita nilai K, nilai K kita 0.1. So dalam soalan ni, dia tak kata nilai K ni pada suhu apa. If they don't tell you at what temperature, as I told you, you can assume dia adalah pada suhu tindak balas. Okay, kan saya beritahu kamu, nilai K change with temperature, right? But if they don't tell you at what temperature, you can safely assume dia adalah pada suhu tindak balas kamu and means you don't have to find new K ke, you don't need to do anymore. Kamu dah terus guna nilai K ini. Next one. Initial concentration of A is 12 mol per dm cube. So what is this? This is CA0. Ini dah beri kita pula. CA0, 12. Then dia kata 30% A converted. So apa ni? Ini adalah X. So dia beri kita YB0, YA0, K, CA0 dan X. So they ask us to find reaction time. So dia bisa kita cari reaction time. Okay, so first step. Okay, macam saya beritahu kamu. Kamu tulis lah dulu. Sekali information tu kamu tulis dulu. Write in the form of the symbol. So this is a little bit of practice because I know uh, you are not yet familiar with the symbol. Tapi kalau you try to get yourself familiar, kamu terus terus dalam bentuk symbol. Supaya kamu terus faham apa ben, apa variables yang kamu dah tahu, apa di variables yang kamu tak tahu. So most of the time saya perasan uh, students yang dia ada masalah sebab dia tak boleh convert information dalam bentuk simbol. So, bila dia tak boleh convert dengan betul, so dia tak sure apa yang dia tahu, apa yang dia tak tahu from the question. So, first of all, like I told you, kalau dia beri kamu initial amount uh, of the reactant, definitely untuk cari theta B. So, kamu tahu theta B sama dengan, dia bagi more fraction, right? So, initial more fraction B over initial more fraction A. So you get YB0 per YA0, you get 0.6 divided by 0.4, you get 1.5. Done. Okay, next.
dia beri kamu K, they give you C and not, they give you X. Okay. So if you are not sure where do you want to start as I told you, kamu tengok dulu equation mana yang nak digunakan. Make sure you check these three. Reactor type, rate law, phase. So in this case, batch, rate law dia minus RA, K, C, A, C, B. This is liquid phase. Okay. When you have this three information, there's only one equation yang akan fit kepada tiga-tiga ini. Which is yang kita baru belajar. Reaction time equals to 1 per K C A naught in bracket 1 per theta B minus 1 ln in bracket theta B minus X per theta B in bracket 1 minus X. So kalau kamu perasan in this equation, they want us to find reaction time. So kalau dia nak cari yang belah kiri, means yang belah kanan, all the unknowns tu dah ada nilai. Kamu kena make sure semua unknown tu ada nilai. Kalau kamu tengok ada lagi unknown yang tak ada nilai, kamu carilah. Means kamu tak akan dapat solve. One equation, satu sahaja unknown yang boleh ada, the rest kamu dah kena cari nilai. So, kalau kamu tak ada nilai, kamu jangan solve. Dia takkan, it will, will never be solved possibly, okay? So, when you replace, as I teach you, you will get the reaction time, 1.9 second. Okay, this one, uh, when you have extra time, please make sure you practice to press your calculator eh, sebab dia ada bracket, sub bracket, main bracket, lagi satu main bracket. So, I always realize uh, student normally boleh ganti nilai yang betul tetapi jawapan akhir tak semestinya akan betul sebab dia sometimes get confused sebab matematik kamu kena faham kan uh, peranan bracket, sub bracket, main bracket. Kamu kena faham the aturan operasi when ada multiple, di, uh, multiplication, division, addition, subtraction. So make sure you learn how to solve this properly. Try tengok kamu tekan kaketa dapat tak jawapan akhir. Kamu kena ingat sebab on paper looks senang tetapi press calculator most of the time student will not get the final answer sebab tekan calculator salah. So you better make sure you practice when you have extra time sebab equation ni pun dah complex tapi kita akan belajar lagi complex uh, shortly later. Okay so done. We are done on batch reactor. Okay, so batch reactor ni sebenarnya tak susah sebab batch reactor hanya ada tiga equation. Okay, now I will introduce you to PFR. Okay, PFR ni lah jadi PFR dengan CSTR susah sebab banyak sangat equation. Kenapa? Banyak sangat version yang kita kena belajar. Okay, but I will go slowly first. Okay, so now I will go to PFR. Okay, so PFR ni kamu dah kena faham beza utama dia dengan batch. Kalau batch, dua-dua uh, fasa pun cara expression dia sama. But for PFR and later shortly later CSTR, fasa tu liquid atau gas, derivation dia dah jadi lain. Okay, kamu kena faham. Miss, bila kamu nak buat, kamu nak tengok equation, you have to really see these three things. Uh, types of reactor, rate law, phase. Phase tu sangat penting, liquid atau gas sebab dia dah express berlainan. So, kamu kena faham. First, kita kena buat untuk uh, liquid. Liquid kita derive dah berlainan. Gas kita dah derive berlainan. That's why you have a lot of equations sebab liquid dan gas kita dah derive differently. Okay, tapi tak apa. I will go slowly again. And sebab dalam PFR, once more, PFR is integral equation. Okay, design equation PFR tu ada integral. Sekali lagi, kita akan guna integral formulation ini. Okay, so similar to batch. Sebab dia ada integral design equation, dia ada part pengamiran. So, kita akan apply balik formulation pengamiran ini. Tetapi, it will be more complex and more comprehensive. So, what do I mean by that? Okay, we start one by one. Okay, we start dengan liquid dahulu. Liquid is easier for us to express. So, I start with liquid. So, PFR, liquid phase. Kita ada tiga uh, rate law tu kan. Kita ada minus RA, KCA. Minus RA KCA square minus RA KCA CB. So again, I repeat, we will have first situation adalah PFR, rate law, uh, PFR liquid yang of which kita diwat lagi sebab kita ada rate law tiga yang berlainan. Okay, so I first start with liquid phase dahulu. Okay, so first, design equation PFR adalah untuk cari volume. Kalau batch reaction time, for PFR, it is for volume of the PFR. 
equals to f a naught integrating 0x dx per minus r a. So, kalau kamu perasan beza kan, kalau tadi batch reactor, ni PFR kan, so volume f a naught 0x dx per minus r a. So, I start first with rate law yang paling senang, minus r a equals to kca. So, Miss katakan rate law dia first order with respect to a, minus r a kca. Then, third, dia adalah liquid phase. As I told you, kita baru nak buat liquid phase kan? So, liquid phase, CA sama dengan CA0, 1 minus X. Okay, kita nak start dengan liquid phase. So, concentration dia, CA sama dengan CA0, 1 minus X. So, maknanya untuk case ini yang kita tengah buat ni adalah untuk specific kepada PFR, first order reaction, liquid phase. So, kalau soalan kamu tak memenuhi tiga-tiga syarat ni, equation ni dah tak valid. Dia mesti memenuhi ketiga-tiga syarat ni. PFR, KCA, liquid, only you can use this equation. So, let me teach you how to derive. Okay. Sama, we start with the design equation, volume PFR equals to FA0, 0x dx per minus RA. Okay, now... Kita dah tahu rate law kita minus RA equals to KCA. So, I replace minus RA sama dengan KCA. So, sama konsep macam batch. K dengan CA, saya tak boleh kamerkan terhadap X. I can only kamer something towards X. I can only kamer, I can only integrate X towards X. So, I must replace my CA with CA not 1 minus X. So, now dah jadi K, C, A naught in bracket 1 minus X. However, as I told you, K and C, A naught got nothing to do with X. They will not be integrated towards X. So, I can take up my K and my C, A naught out of the bracket, out of the integral part. So, it become, kat luar tu jadi, F, A naught per K, C, A naught. Dah take out. So, my integral part become 0 to X, integrating 1 per 1 minus x towards dx, towards x lah. Okay, so again, untuk part ni, you don't have to worry. Kita tengok je list of integral formula. Integral formula tu dah bagi solution. Kita tak payah fikir dah macam nak solve solution tu. It's already given. So it's given as ln in bracket 1 minus 1 per 1 minus x. So I just combine sahaja the ln 1 per 1 minus x I combine with the FA0 per KCA0. So now saya dah dapat volume PFR sama dengan FA0 per KCA0 ln 1 per 1 minus X. Maksudnya, katakan you want to find the volume, you are given information FA0, KCA0, X. You can find volume or vice versa. Let's say you are given Volume F A naught K C A naught kamu boleh cari X. Vice versa juga. Maknanya katakan dalam equation ni satu unknown kamu disuruh cari the rest information you are given. Okay. Now, ini part yang sedikit kompleks pasal flow reactor. Okay. Design ikut uh, final equation dia ada version yang berlainan. Mesti kamu pendingkan kenapa ada version yang berlainan. Okay. Because ia depends on information yang kamu ada. What do I mean by that? Okay. Version pertama yang kamu baru belajar, yang saya tolong, uh, yang I help, I teach you how to derive, it is assumption that kalau nak cari volume of the PFR, saya kena tahu FA0, saya kena tahu K, saya kena tahu CA0, saya kena tahu X. Okay. Now, let's say kamu tak tahu FA0 dan CA0. As I told you kan, kalau nak solve equation, satu equation, kena ada satu saja unknown. Yang lain kena tahu. Katakan dalam part, dalam information tu, kamu tak tahu FA0 dan CA0. However, let's say kamu tahu epsilon not. Apa tu epsilon not? Epsilon not adalah volumetric flow rate. FA0 molar flow rate, CA0 concentration. Katakan kamu tak tahu molar flow rate A, initial molar flow rate of A, FA0. Kamu tak tahu initial concentration of A, CA0. So, kamu tak tahu dua ni, macam mana kita nak solve? But, if you know volumetric flow rate, initial volumetric flow rate, you can also solve. Why? Because, if you remember, 
FA0 divided by CA0 is actually equals to inlet volumetric flow rate. Your epsilon naught. Epsilon naught tu sama dengan FA0 per CA0. So, saya boleh replace FA0 per CA0 ni dengan epsilon naught. So, now equation saya dah jadi version kedua. Version kedua kata volume PFR sama dengan Elect volumetric flow rate epsilon naught divide by k ln in bracket 1 per 1 minus x. Maksudnya, kalau kamu tahu epsilon naught, kamu tahu k, kamu tahu x. Boleh cari volume ataupun sama. Kamu tahu volume, kamu tahu volumetric flow rate. Initial volumetric flow rate, kamu tahu k, kamu boleh cari x. So on and so forth. So version kedua ni adalah untuk kita kalau tak tahu FA naught, CA naught tapi tahu epsilon naught pun kita boleh solve version kedua. Now, ada version ketiga. Kenapa ada version ketiga? Version pertama, version kedua, cari volume. Version ketiga, kalau kita nak tahu dalam bentuk space time. Do you remember I taught you in chapter 2, the concept of space time? Space time tu apa? Space time is volume over initial volumetric flow rate. V over epsilon naught. Okay, I taught you in chapter 2. Sekarang kita kena correlate balik dengan chapter 2. Chapter 2 kita dah belajar juga pasal space time. Space time is volume over epsilon naught. Volumetric flow rate. So, kalau kamu perasan, from the second version yang warna hijau ni, okay, kamu tengok belah kiri volume kan? Belah kanan, epsilon naught, K, ln, 1 per 1 tolak X. This epsilon naught, this volumetric flow rate yang kat belah kanan, I can move to belah kiri. So, saya pindah ke belah kiri. Kamu tahu kan, kalau matematik operation, kalau pindah kiri ke kanan, kanan ke kiri, yang pengatas akan jadi pembawah. The top will now become at the bottom. So, it become volume PFR over inlet volumetric flow rate. V per epsilon naught. So, V per epsilon naught tu apa? V per epsilon naught adalah space time. So now space time tau right? So kita kita tahu tau for PFR. The tau for the PFR is 1 per K ln in bracket 1 per 1 minus X. Kenapa dah tak ada epsilon naught? Sebab epsilon naught kan dah pindah ke belah kiri. Kita bahagikan dengan volume dapat tau. So now kamu ada version yang ketiga. So version ketiga especially for space time. Version pertama kedua is for volume tetapi Depends on diberi FA0 ke, diberi CA0 ke, diberi epsilon naught. Okay. So, then, however, kamu kena ingat ketiga-tiga equation dalam box ini is must be based on tiga syarat yang saya kata. PFR, first order reaction, liquid phase. Kalau salah satu syarat ni tak dipenuhi, ketiga-tiga equation ni tak valid dah. Okay. So, that's the part that you have to understand. Memang tak payah bimbang pasal derivation. Tapi saya, it become a problem bila student tak faham bila nak guna equation ni. So, ketiga-tiga equation ni kena penuhi tiga syarat. PFR, first order reaction, liquid. One, you tak fulfill this equation, all three are not valid anymore. Kamu kena cari equation yang lain. So, done on liquid phase. Okay, liquid phase, first order. So, tengok first order liquid phase, kamu dah belajar tiga kan? Okay, we go to the next one. Okay, next one is... Second order pula. Okay, so sekarang tadi kita buat PFR, liquid phase, first order. Now, I teach you for uh, PFR, still liquid phase, tapi sekarang dah second order reaction. Minus RA tu sama dengan KCA power of 2. So, you just remember, tukar rate law, tukar equation. Tukar reactor, tukar equation. Tukar fasa, tukar equation. Okay, so... Now, let us do for second order reaction. Okay, apa beza dia pula? Okay, so design equation masih sama. The starting point is still the same. Sebab reaktor masih sama kan? So, volume PFR equals to Fe0 in bracket 0x dx per minus Ra. Part ni masih sama. Just that, next, minus Ra, I have to change. It is no longer KCA. This case is we consider if your reaction is second order with respect to A. So, part ni yang kadang-kadang kamu kena faham. Kenapa kadang-kadang 
I told you, kalau tukar reactant, kamu kena kira balik. Sebab, when you tukar reactant, rate law dia akan berubah. Okay, ataupun kalau kamu tukar mungkin pun kadang-kadang, dia punya reaction mechanism dah berubah. Rate law dah berubah lagi. So, rate law sebarang perubah dalam tindak balas, will change rate law, design equation dah berubah. Okay, so next. Okay, so the minus RA become KCA, power of 2, because that's my rate law. So, same concept. CA dan K kena, uh, CA have to be converted into the form of X sebab kita nak kami terhadap X. So, kita tahu liquid phase CA equals to CA0 in bracket 1 minus X. Hence, CA square become CA0 square in bracket 1 minus X square as well. So, kita square CA CA0 pun square, in bracket 1 minus X pun kita kena squarekan. Then next step, the K CA0 square tak ada kaitan dengan X. So kita bawa keluar daripada part pengamiran. So kita bawa keluar tu bukan sembarangan sebab kita bila kita kamerkan terhadap X, kedua-dua ni tidak akan berubah terhadap X. So we take out, so at the outside it become FA0 per K CA0 square. Part pengamiran akan tinggal 0 to X dx per in bracket 1 minus x power of 2. So as I told you, kalau kamu buat matematik, mungkin kamu terpaksa buka kurungan, dia jadi kuadratik, kamu solve kuadratik tu for matematik lah. Tapi for chemical engineering reaction ni, kamu dah diselamatkan. You don't have to go to the extent because terus diberi. Kalau pengamiran ni melibatkan dx per 1 minus x square tu, penyelesaian dia terus straight. x per 1 minus x. Okay, so kamu terus copy saja. So, the x per 1 minus x, kamu combine dengan tadi yang part luar tu, FA0 per K CA0 square. So, this formula you get is to find the volume of your PFR. Tu version pertama. So, sama je konsep. Kamu tahu FA0, kamu tahu CA0, kamu tahu K, kamu tahu X, you can find the volume or vice versa. Okay, tak semestinya dalam setiap soalan, kamu kena cari volume PFR. So, macam sama juga macam real application kan. Katakan, uh, katakan kamu kalau kamu nak cari volume reaktor yang baru, mungkin kamu akan guna equation ni untuk cari volume. Tapi mungkin dalam application, dalam real life application, mungkin kamu dah ada existing reaktor. Katakan kamu ada existing reaktor, kamu nak tukar just FA0, kamu nak tukar molar fluorid. Means, kamu dah tahu volume, kamu tahu K, kamu tahu CA0, kamu tahu X, kamu nak tahu molar fluorid pun boleh digunakan. Equation masih sama. Okay, so next. Okay, next part. Sama je konsep macam tadi. For the first version, kita kena tahu FA0, kita kena tahu CA0. Okay, let's say kita tak tahu FA0. Okay, so kita, instead kita tahu epsilon not. So, kita boleh tukar kepada version yang kedua. Version yang kedua sebab FA0 1 at the top, divide by 1 CA0 at the bottom, you get epsilon not. So, saya dah ganti. Instead dalam bentuk FA0 per CA0 square, sekarang jadi dalam bentuk epsilon not per CA0 ada key. So, bawah tu masih ada satu lagi CA0 sebab I can only cancel 1 CA0. FA0 at the top, cancel be 1 CA0 at the bottom, kan cancel lah, divide. 1 FA0 at the top, divide by 1 CA0 at the bottom, I get 1 epsilon naught. Satu lagi baki CA0 kat bawah tu masih ada. And then combine with K, and then the integ uh, and the part, the bracket, X per 1 minus X. So now you get the second version. So apa beza dia? Version dia adalah, version pertama ada FA0, version kedua tu adalah bentuk epsilon naught. So, macam nak tahu version mana nak guna? Kamu kena tengok soalan lah. Soalan tu pemisah apa yang dia beri. So, again, kamu kena tengok version mana bergantung kepada information dalam soalan. So, if you identify the wrong information, you may use the wrong equation. Salah lah kamu punya jawapan. Okay. So, the third version. Kenapa the third version? Third version nak cari space time. Sama konsep. Nak cari space time pula. So, kalau check space time, just remember the epsilon not on the right is transferred to the left. So, jadi volume PFR divided by epsilon naught, epsilon naught, you get the tau, the space time for the PFR. So, on the right hand side become 1 per KCA naught in bracket X per 1 minus X. So, you can remember, you must also remember, tadi pun kamu dah derive space time kan, tapi kamu perasan kamu derive dua space time yang berlainan kan, kenapa? Previous one was for Rate law dia KCA. 
this space time dah berubah sebab this space time is for rate law minus RA equals to KCA square. So same concept, this three equation is only and only applicable if your application soalan kamu ataupun masalah kamu fulfill this three. PFR, liquid phase minus RA KCA square. Salah satu tak fulfill, equation ni dah tak boleh digunakan. Dia tak boleh fulfill hanya satu, fulfill hanya dua, tak boleh. All three fulfill, you can use. One not fulfill, this, this equation is no longer applicable. Okay, so done, right? So, in, tadi kamu dah buat batch tiga. PFR first order, tiga. PFR second order liquid, tiga. So, you have learned nine equation already in like half, one and a half hour, you already learn nine equation. So, as I told you, uh, kamu tak payah memorize, tapi I keep repeating, kena betul-betul faham macam mana equation ni digunakan. Okay, next one. Okay, so now we do untuk the last rate law, minus RA equals to KCACB. So, kamu tengok equation dah jadi makin panjang kan? Sebab sekarang kita address pula untuk minus RA KCACB. So, again, dia kena fulfill tiga untuk equation ni. PFR minus RA KCACB liquid phase. Salah satu tak fulfill, ketiga-tiga ni pun again tak valid. Okay, so let me explain. Equation jadi makin panjang kan? Okay, so first of all, kita nak derive kan? So, volume PFR equals to FA0 integrating 0 to X DX per KCACB. Sebab rate law sekarang, the rate law is now KCACB. Okay, then next. Same concept. Kita kena derive juga equation concentration kan? So, CA equals to CA0 1 minus X for liquid. Okay, again, this is only for liquid. So, for the case of liquid B, uh, liquid for B, CB equals to CA0 in bracket theta B minus B per A X. So, sama macam tadi yang batch. Okay, again, sebab we will use the same integral formula. And this integral formula, limitation dia adalah B per A tu mesti satu. Sebab kalau kamu tengok formula dia, kalau kamu perasan dalam formula dia, kalau yang saya tengah point ni, dia adalah 0 to X DX per 1 minus X dalam bracket theta B minus X. Maksudnya B per A tu mesti satu baru kita boleh guna equation ini. Sebab tu kita terpaksa jadikan B per A tu satu. So that's why CB become CA0 theta B minus X. However you must remember, dia hanya sebab untuk guna equation ini. Bukannya masuk semua case pun B per A adalah satu, tidak. Just that for this equation, it has to be one. But you don't have to worry. Okay, kamu just ingat saja yang dia adalah theta B minus B per A X and I will make sure dalam equation persamaan kimia tu B per A tu adalah satu. Ini dalam test ke, dalam exam ke, B per A tu dah satu supaya kamu dah tak payah bimbang, tak payah worry. Tapi equation kata B per A tu satu. Tapi saya tengok equation persamaan kimia saya B per A tu bukan satu. So I will not let that happen. You don't have to worry. So B per A tu terus saja satu. Okay, done right? Okay, now I comment balik eh. So CA sama dengan CA0 in bracket 1 minus X. Then CB, I will replace with CA0 in bracket theta B minus X. So, saya replace CA, saya replace CB dalam bentuk CA0 1 minus X, CA0 theta B minus X. So, same concept, the K, the CA0 and another CA0, I take out from the integral part. So, dia jadi FA0 per K CA0 square. Integral part 0 to x dx per 1 minus x in bracket theta b minus x. So, as I told you, kalau mathematics, you have to open bracket, so on and so forth. But we don't need to do this in reaction engineering because kita dah dapat solution dia. Kita dah diberi solution dia straight away. So, it is actually 1 per theta b ln in bracket theta b minus x. Pembawa dia theta B in bracket 1 minus X. So, this I combine dengan FA0 per KCA0 square. So, when I combine, I get the rate font equation which is to find the volume PFR. So, equation jadi lebih panjang kan? Kenapa berbeza? Sebab rate law dah berbeza. 
So first version sama macam konsep dia. First version tahu F A not, tahu K, tahu C A not, tahu theta B, tahu X. You can find the volume or vice versa. Okay, salah satu unknown kamu boleh cari. Asalkan unknown yang lain kita tahu nilai dia. Okay, so the first version. Second version samalah. Second version katakan if kita tahu epsilon not. If we know the inlet volumetric flow rate, you may use the second version, the green font. So green font tu basically just that, saya bahagikan satu F not di atas dengan satu C not di bawah, I will get V uh, epsilon not. So I get the second version. And similarly, I get the third version untuk mencari space time. So space time ni adalah untuk rate law, Minus RA, KCACB, I can find the space time for the uh, this rate law. So it become tau PFR equals to 1 per KC not in the bracket the whole solution. So same concept, why you got different volume, why you got different space time? Purely because I changed my rate law, okay, but all cases are for PFR liquid phase. So, kamu dah belajar berapa? Kamu dah belajar 9 equation untuk PFR. Tambah lagi 3 tadi, kamu dah belajar 12 equation so far. Okay, so, you, I hope yang penting kamu faham kenapa ada 12 equation yang kamu belajar so far. It's just purely because tukar reactor, tukar rate law, uh, tukar fasa. Tukar fasa belum lagi. Tukar fasa, we will go next one when we change to phase. Okay, so we are done on PFR liquid phase. Okay. Now I go to the more complex one ataupun basically equation yang paling 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 panjang adalah melibatkan this situation. This situation is when is PFR gas phase. Tadi yang kita buat 9 equation PFR tu adalah liquid phase. Sekarang kita belajar lagi equation untuk gas phase PFR. So gas phase PFR kita kena address rate law yang berlainan juga. Okay, so let me do this slowly. Uh, how do we derive? Jadi ini panjang. Okay, so first, still the same concept. Design equation still the same. Volume PFR equals to F A naught in bracket 0x dx per minus RA. Still the same. Second, rate law. Kita try untuk case minus RA KCA. So maybe you think, tapi doktor dulu ni kan sama macam tadi. Yes, it's the same but benda yang ketiga yang menyebabkan dia berubah sebab sekarang kita buat gas phase. So kalau gas phase, tadi yang liquid kan, liquid phase, concentration Ca equals to Ca not in bracket 1 minus X. That was liquid. Tetapi gas dia tak macam tu. Gas dia jadi Ca equals to Ca not 1 minus X per 1 plus epsilon X. Disebabkan my concentration is expressed differently for gas phase flow reactor menyebabkan final equation dah jadi lain. Sebab-sebab itu saja sebenarnya. And then derivation dia pun jadi a bit more complex. Okay, so how it how it happen? Okay, so same concept. Kita start balik dengan design equation. So F A naught in bracket R integrating 0x dx per kca so, minus ra saya dah jadi kca so sekarang saya tukar sebab ca saya saya akan tukar dalam bentuk ca not dan x kan so it become k tu masih ada tapi ca sekarang jadi ca not in bracket 1 minus x kalau liquid kamu stop macam tu kan tapi gas kamu tambah pembawa dia 1 plus epsilon x so sebab itu yang menjadi equation dia dah berlainan. And then kalau kamu tengok part ni kompleks kan, dia ada tiga layer, A per B per C. But if you remember I taught you, when you have A per B per C, the C goes to the top. A per B per C equals to AC per B. That's why this 1 plus epsilon X naik ke atas. So become 1 plus epsilon X ke atas, kat bawah dia 1 minus X. Lepas tu, the K dan C A not ni saya bawa keluar sebab dia dah tak ada kaitan dengan X. Saya bawa keluar K dengan C A not ni daripada the integral part. So, it become F A not per K C A not integrating 0 X 1 plus epsilon X per 1 minus X. So, this part integral you have never seen before kan sebelum ni tak ada kamu jumpa yang part ni. However, sama case. 
saya tengok balik list of formulation dah ada dah solution untuk this integral. For this integration, okay, from 0 to x, 1 plus epsilon x per 1 minus x, the solution is 1 plus epsilon ln 1 per 1 minus x minus epsilon x. Epsilon kamu dah pernah belajar. I taught you before. Eh? Epsilon tu macam nak cari. Tutorial soalan tutorial chapter 3 pun uh, on Monday. Kita dah belajar macam nak cari Epsilon tu. Okay. Tapi kalau you don't remember. You forget. Uh, memang dia sebab dia ada a bit complex. Nanti tutorial kita akan discuss balik. Ingatkan balik macam nak cari Epsilon. So kamu mesti kena ingat cara cari Epsilon dalam chapter 3 tu. Masih digunakan dalam chapter 4. Okay. So come back to this. So solution for this integral is combined with the FA0 and KCA0. So, I combine combine the depan, I copy the integral solution, I get the final equation to find the volume PFR. So, again, this formula is specific for uh, PFR. Uh, first order reaction, gas phase. Gas phase. So, kamu tengok, tadi kita dah pernah cari untuk first order PFR kan, tapi tu first order PFR liquid. This is first order uh, first order PFR gas dah lain equation dia sebab concentration dah lain concentration dah lain express equation pun dah jadi lain okay so same concept nak cari volume ni kamu kena tahu F A0 kena tahu K kena tahu C A0 kena tahu epsilon kena tahu X means kamu kena cari dulu anun anun yang lain untuk diselesaikan only you can get the PFR volume then same concept, ada version yang kedua. This green font version is because if you don't know F A naught dan C A naught but you are given epsilon naught because dalam original equation, you have F A naught and bottom C A naught kan? So F A naught divided with C A naught is actually epsilon naught. So now we got the second version when we are given epsilon naught. The rest are still the same. So again, nanti dalam tutorial, dalam uh, make sure you learn how to calculate. Sebab equation ni pun, student has the tendency to not able to get the final answer. Sebab kamu tengok equation ni ada multiplication, ada lawn, ada uh, bracket, ada sub bracket, ada main bracket, ada division, ada subtraction. So, uh, kamu betul-betul kena faham operation mathematics. Bracket, sub-bracket, open bracket, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. Kamu kena betul-betul faham ketamaan bila nak mengira ni. So, kalau kamu silap konsep, kamu tak ingat mana satu yang kena solve dulu, uh, that's why the final answer you may not get accurately. Okay? So, tak apa nanti tutorial kita akan practice. Okay, done. Then, last version samalah. Kalau I'm given... Uh, if I want to find space time, nak cari space time untuk PFR, first order, gas phase pun kamu boleh cari. So, just bawa sahaja epsilon naught from right to left. So, you bring from right to left, dia dah jadi bahagi. So, volume bahagi dengan volumetric flow rate, you get space time. So, space time dia equals dengan 1 per K in bracket the whole entire solution. So, similar concept to the rest of that you have learned. This three equation is only, only applicable if you have PFR, KCA, gas phase. Either one berubah, tiga-tiga ni equation dah tak boleh digunakan. Same concept yang tadi. Okay, so done. Okay, so the last one for today. Okay, so basically kamu dah belajar 3, 6, 9, 12 plus batch 3, kamu dah belajar 15 equation sebenarnya dalam masa 2 jam. Okay, so a lot, right? A lot. Later later on Monday, kamu akan belajar lagi equation-equation yang lain. Okay, last one for today, kamu tengok as I told you, uh, ini equation yang paling panjang. It can never go any more longer than this. Uh, for, uh, okay, it can never go any more longer than this. Kecuali nanti kalau kita tambah a bit more lah, a bit more. Tapi tu dah taklah complex macam ni lah. Okay, so the last one is to address Bila I have PFR, gas phase, rate law, minus RA, KCA square. Meaning, the reaction is second order with respect to A. So, kalau kamu perasan kenapa tak ada KCACB? Saya takkan ajar KCACB sebab 
Kalau kamu perasan, KCA square pun dah panjang ni. Kamu nampak equation dia panjang kan? Kalau tambah lagi KCA CB, equation dia 2, 3, 2, 3 line kot. So, I don't cover KCA CB liquid phase, uh, gas phase. I only cover KCA, KCA square. Because nak soft ni pun, it takes a lot of time and most of the time, final answer rarely sudah dapat betul final answer untuk yang ni sebab dia banyak sangat part dalam equation. Okay, so uh, how do we address this? Okay, so again, sama konsep, design equation sama, rate law yang berubah because minus RA equals to KCA square and then concentration sebab dia adalah liquid uh, gas phase. Okay, so become CA per CA naught 1 minus X per 1 plus epsilon X. So kita combine, so Volume PFR equals to FA0, 0x, dx per minus RA itu become KCA square. Then same concept, CA tu jadi kalau kita squarekan CA, yang belah, ki, belah kanan kita akan jadi CA0 square, 1 minus x square, 1 plus epsilon x pun kita squarekan. That's why we get this third part. Then, sama konsep. The K, CA0, I take out from the integral part. So, jadi FA0 per K, CA0 square. Integral part, yang kat bawah ni, the last layer, 1 plus epsilon x square ni, goes to the top. So, it become 1 plus epsilon x bracket, power of 2, divide by 1 minus x, bracket, power of 2. So, same concept. This integral part, luckily, kita dah tahu solution dia ataupun the solution is given tetapi kamu tengok betapa panjangnya solution dia 2 epsilon in bracket 1 plus epsilon ln 1 minus x bracket plus epsilon square x plus 1 plus epsilon power of 2 multiply by x divide by 1 minus x ha, ni yang paling panjang yang kamu tengok ni memang susah nak solve sebab dia ada multiplication, division, addition, subtraction so part ni kamu betul-betul kena tahu mana satu yang kamu kena solve dulu. So this one is your mathematics punya knowledge. Bracket, sub bracket, tambah, darab, tolak, bahagi. Which one comes first bila kamu nak solve. Okay, so sama je. You combine this formula, a solution dengan FA0 per KCA0 square yang tadi tu. So you get the first version to find volume. Then you get the second version, yang uh, the green font second version because instead of FA0 per CA0 square, we change into epsilon naught per KCA0. Just kita bahagi satu FA0 di atas with one CA0 at the bottom, you get epsilon naught. And the third version is to find the space time. So sama je konsep dia, space time, the third version to find space time. And again, these three equation is only applicable if you have PFR, rate law KCA square, gas phase. Salah satu berubah, equation ni dah tak valid for you to use. Okay, so PFR, you have learned basically 15 equation, tambah batch tadi 3 equation, 18 equation. Okay, so I told you right, you will learn 30 and 40, right? Sebab kita belum touch lagi CSTR, kita belum touch lagi change of pressure, kita belum touch lagi change of temperature. That's why it can go to 30 or 40 equation. Okay, right? Okay, so uh, next one, last one is let's try one question. Yang equation panjang-panjang ni, kita try one question and tengok Boleh tak kita solve equation dia? Okay, so this equation. Given an elementary gas phase reaction. So, on that very one short sentence, kamu ada actually dua information yang penting. Yang kan kita ada tiga syarat kan? Jenis reaktor, rate law dengan uh, concentration kan? So, daripada satu ayat pendek ni, kita dah tahu dua benda dah. Apa dia? First, dia kata gas phase. So, kamu dah tahu, this is gas phase reaction. Kamu dah kena faham. Okay, syarat pertama dia gas phase. Syarat kedua apa dia? Dia kata elementary. Kalau elementary means, kamu dah boleh derive design equation dia. The design equation will be minus RA equals to KCA power of 2. Kenapa power of 2? Because elementary reaction, reaction order dia follow stoichiometric coefficient. The stoichiometric coefficient for A is 2. So, minus RA equals to KCA power of 2. Second order with respect to A. Dua syarat dah penuhi. Kita dah tahu rate law, 
KC is square, kita tahu dia adalah gas phase. Okay, third dia, third dia information dia kata, take space in PFR. So, kamu dah ada tiga-tiga syarat information yang kamu dah tahu. PFR, KC is square, gas phase. So, kamu tengok je, kamu tengok equation tu katakan kamu dah belajar ke semua equation kan? Kamu tengok pada notes kamu, okay, equation mana yang memenuhi ketiga-tiga ini? Okay, equation tu je yang betul. Equation lain semua tak boleh guna. Equation satu je, akan ada satu-satu saja equation yang memenuhi ketiga-tiga syarat ini. Uh, PFR, uh, gas phase, second order reaction. Okay, dan Right, so sekarang kita tengok information lain yang kita tahu, yang dia nak kita cari kan. So, dia kata, constant temperature 500 Kelvin, constant pressure 8.2 atm. Okay, dia beri kita temperature, dia beri kita pressure. Okay, dia kata, POA is fed into the system. Okay, so dia kata POA fed into the system, maknanya YA not satu. Okay, POA maksudnya asalnya 100% A, so YA not is 1. 500 Kelvin ni adalah apa? P not. Constant pressure ni, ah 8.2 atm, P not. Okay, so kita tahu P not, kita tahu T not, kita tahu YA not. Okay, next. Given reaction rate constant, 0.5. So, K, 0.5. Initial concentration of A, 0.2. CA not, 0.2. Initial flow rate, 2.5 dm cube per second. Okay, so apa tu dm cube per second? Uh, sebab flow rate ada dua kan, molar flow rate atau volumetric flow rate kan. Bila kamu tengok flow rate, kamu kena be very, very careful. Sebab flow rate ada dua, molar flow rate atau volumetric flow rate. In this case, is dm cube per second. dm cube tu volume, second to time. Volume per time, volumetric flow rate. So, this is initial volumetric flow rate. Epsilon not 2.5. Okay, next. Conversion 60%. 0.6. X is 0.6. They ask us to find the volume. Okay, so kita macam nak, nak cari. Okay, so kita nak cari volume. Okay, so kalau kamu tengok information tu banyak sangat kan, kamu tak tahu nak proses kan, dia cari paling senang, kamu terus tengok dulu design equation yang kamu nak gunakan. Ataupun final equation that you need to use. Okay, so as I told you, you check which design equation yang fulfill ketiga-tiga syarat ini. PFR, gas phase, rate law second order. So, hanya ada satu equation sebenarnya. Okay, yang which is given as volume PFR equals to epsilon naught KCA naught in bracket K uh, 2 epsilon in bracket 1 plus epsilon ln 1 minus x plus epsilon square x 1 plus the so equation lah saya pun tak hafal saya pun nak nak cakap pun panjang kan okay. kamu dah tahu ini equation kamu nak guna so next step dia kan nak cari volume so nak cari volume belah kiri is what we want to find means yang belah kanan Kesemuanya mesti ada nilai. Kalau tak ada nilai, you cannot solve the equation. So, kamu cari one by one information itu. Contohnya, first, inlet volumetric flow rate. So, inlet volumetric flow rate dah diberi. Tadi kita tahu inlet volumetric flow rate 2.5. So, kita settle dah epsilon naught. Second, K. K pun dah diberi. Reaction rate constant 0.5. Settle. Next, CA naught. CA naught pun dia diberi. Initial concentration 0.2 dan so tengok dalam bracket pula pertama epsilon okey so epsilon kalau kamu perasan kita kena cari sendiri you have learned dalam chapter 3 epsilon tu kita boleh cari epsilon tu sama dengan apa epsilon tu ada equation ada sub equation lagi kalau kamu ingat so part epsilon ni memang sedikit menyusahkan sebab kamu kena cari separately dahulu but if you forget let me refresh back Epsilon ni sebenarnya sama dengan YA0 sigma. So, kita kena cari dulu Epsilon tu. Sama dengan YA0 sigma. Apa tu YA0? YA0 is the initial mole fraction of A. Okay, so dalam kes soalan ni, dia kata pure A initially. Means, pada waktu asal dalam reaktor kamu, initially is just A only. So, YA0 is 1. Okay, dan what about sigma? If you forget, sigma ni ada lagi formula dia. So, equation, sub-equation. Sigma ni adalah, uh, dia ada formula. So, and sigma is the ratio of the stoichiometric coefficient. Ratio dia, dia, kamu kena tambahkan ratio stoichiometric product 
minus ratio stoichiometric reactant. Dalam kes ni, you have only one product, one reactant. So, it become B per A. Positive B per A. Sebab B adalah product. Positive B per A minus technically A per A. Sebab tu dia jadi satu. B per A tolak A per A. A per A tu satu. Jadi, so jadi minus one. Kenapa minus? Sebab A is a reactant. Okay, so B per A is 1 over 2. So 1 over 2 minus 1, you get your sigma negative 0 0.5. So as I told you, dia possible untuk dapat negative. Tak apa pun. Okay, so sigma negative 0 0.5, you multiply dengan Y A not tadi yang 1, you get your epsilon. So epsilon is negative 0 0.5. Ingat eh, yang volume matrix for rate tu adalah epsilon. This one is epsilon, different symbol lah, eh? different pembahaman. Setakat ni kamu confused, kejap saya cakap epsilon. Epsilon tu volumetric flow rate. This one ni adalah epsilon from Greek symbol yang berlainan. Okay, so you know why it not, you know your sigma, you will get your epsilon. Epsilon as I told you can be negative, can be positive depending on your reaction. Kalau dapat negative pun tak apa, dapat positive pun tak apa. Okay. So, epsilon kamu dah ada kan? So, kamu boleh ganti epsilon. Next, X. So, X in the question is given as 60% kan? Dalam soalan kata X 60%, 0.6. So, X 0.6. So, yang menjadikan benda ni susah penyelesaian dia sebab kamu punya epsilon ni sekarang adalah negatif. So, kamu bayangkan kamu nak kena ganti kat dalam ni, kamu have to be double, triple careful because my epsilon is now negative. So the rest you replace, you can find the volume of your PFR. So I would like you to challenge yourself. Nanti saya akan habiskan kelas ni in one or two minutes. So you have additional dalam 14 minutes, 10 minutes. Can you please try by yourself? Calculate ni sampai dapat jawapan akhir. I want to see and maybe you can ask your friend or if you are together, you can try calculate, tengok kamu dapat tak jawapan akhir yang sama. I can tell you, kamu ada 29 orang kan? Kamu akan, takkan semua dapat jawapan yang sama, mesti ada banyak-banyak version jawapan yang berlainan. Tetapi akan hanya ada satu saja jawapan yang betul. Okay, so what I'm going to do is, I'm going to finish the class soon. Okay, for those yang berminat or you want to challenge yourself, you can try to solve this. And you give me the final, you type the final answer in the chat group. Nanti saya akan beri jawapan final jawapan saya. Kita tengok siapa yang sebenarnya, bukan kita tengok lah. We see, uh, kamu kira betul ke atau tidak. Okay, so you just put in the chat group. If you have time, saya tak pasal. If you have time, nanti dalam 10 minutes tu you have time. You try to calculate by yourself. Dah ada pun semua nombor ni. Kamu kira, kamu bagi saya jawapan akhir untuk volume PFR ini. If there's enough answer, I will give you the final answer. We will see. Apakah beza jawapan sebenar dengan jawapan yang kamu beri? Tengok sama tak? Kalau sama, means you are on the right track. If tak sama, kamu check balik part mana yang kamu kira tak betul. Okay? So, uh, that's all for today. Okay, tak ada apa kan? Habis, okay. So that's all for today. So I will continue our lesson next Monday where I will continue habiskan dulu chapter 4 baru I go to tutorial. Okay, so for those who came late just now, I will do your test on week 7. So minggu ni minggu 5, next week week 6, I will cover on week 7 either during Monday class time or to during the Wednesday time lah, during class time. Either way, saya ambil class time, saya takkan ambil extra time kamu for the test. Okay, so that's all for today. Thank you everyone. So as I told you, if you got extra time, just try to solve.